Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, first up, there's a possibility we might have load shedding at six o'clock, which means the lights will be going out. Okay, we might not get to everything. We're going to speak to Mr. Joey a bit later and see what we can do to catch up. Okay, all right. Point number two is we are making a recording today. We're recording my voice and we're recording what's on the screen. And we're going to put that on YouTube for you guys if you want to go watch it again on your own time. It's also for your parents if they want to see what's happening as well as people who couldn't make it today. Okay, hopefully everything goes well. All right, let's get started. Okay, this is lesson four. Okay, on Friday the 12th of June. Okay, at Trinity House Preparatory School. Okay, last time, what did we do last time? We did absolute relative position and direction, and we did a game to illustrate how that worked where we had a cat chase a ball. All right, who remembers what's the difference between absolute and relative? Yes. Absolute is Yes, good. And relative is? Yes. Yes, well done. Okay, then we did the pen command. Quiet, please, guys. Quiet. We did the pen command where we drew a little, got a little program going where we got a beetle to draw some lines. And then we also looked at the repeat command to save some time. Remember what we did there? Instead of drawing a square one line at a, si at a time, we just drew one line and then we repeated it four times. Okay. Then we also had exercises for homework, exercise two and three, or two and eight, sorry. Did you guys have a look at it at all? Okay, all right. If you do have questions about the homework, you can speak to me after class. All right. Um, did anyone have a look at our website? Lesson three. Okay. All right. There is some useful stuff there, guys, and we will put up a new page every week for every lesson, okay? We'll put up the homework answers there as well as the exercises and videos which we can't get to during the class. Does anyone remember why I've got this picture here? Anyone? Yes. It shows the rotation of the world. Okay, shows the rotation of the world. Okay, but how many days does it take for the earth to go around the sun? 365. And how many degrees do we have in a circle? 360, yes, all right. Yes. Okay, today we are going to do a few more things, okay? Guys, quiet, please. We're going to explore the stamp command, okay, which is making it easy to draw complicated pictures, okay? We're going to create two games. I'm not sure if we'll finish the second one. And we're going to learn about cloning sprites. Does anyone know what cloning is? Yes, Sarah. Okay, so it's like making a copy, all right? And we can do some pretty amazing things with clones. All right, so this is our agenda. We're going to get starting with stamps. Everyone knows what a normal stamp looks like. Now we're going to do stamping in scratch. We're going to create a get the money game, which is similar to whack-a-mole. Have any of you ever played whack-a-mole? Okay, what happens in whack-a-mole? Yes. Yes, something like that. Then we're going to create an apple cart game. Quiet, please, guys. Sarah. And then we're going to go over the whole cloning thing a bit more in detail if we have time to explain some of the finer issues that go with cloning. All right, so we're going to start with stamping, okay? Now, stamping is quite cool because remember before we've drawn patterns like this, okay, where we have things spin around to draw pictures, but we have to draw... The picture that we're spinning around. We did it with the pen in last episode, in last lesson. So we would have had to draw a line up, turn, draw a line, turn, draw a line, turn, draw a line, and that would have given us our flag, and then we would have used the repeat command to get that flag to print in a circle. However, what you can do is you can stamp your sprite, okay? So whatever picture your sprite is, okay, remember sprite has costumes, it can have different costumes. Whichever one is the selected one, you can stamp it with the stamp command. So do you guys want to try and create this quickly? Okay. You don't have to choose the flag. You can choose any of the existing built-in sprites. Okay. Start with the cat. It'll be the quickest. OK. 
Okay, remember we don't have a lot of time and we might have load shedding. Okay, well done. I see some people are getting it done. Okay, now two things. Remember we don't have the, the block at the top with the green flag in it. So that means you have to click on your script to get it to run. Okay, and what happens if you change the option in the first block, set rotation style from all round to something else? What happens? Try changing that and see what happens. Okay, nothing. Okay, depending which option you chose, it'll either not do anything or it'll just flip. Okay, so it's very important when doing stamping and you're doing things where they move, that you must set the rotation style to all around. Okay, anyone have any questions? Okay, we're moving on. Okay, we're going to do our first game for today. Okay, it's called Catch the Money. Okay, and I'm going to explain it, so please look at the screen. Okay, we have the background, which is tiles, blue and yellow tiles. We have the gold in the green bag, and we have our character, which is a blue cat. And we have a, a score counter at the bottom. All right. Now, the stage obviously has this grid, blue and yellow grid, as its backdrop. So that's easy to do. Okay. The sprite of gold is going to jump around. Okay. It's going to pop up, hang around for three seconds, and then pop up somewhere else. If you manage to move your cat onto it before it disappears, then you will score a point. Okay. And the way the program's done is it only bounces around 20 times and then the game's over. All right, so should we start with this one? Everyone understand how the game's going to work? Okay. Right, before we get there, we have to explain some things, okay? These blocks up here, I'm going to go through them with you slowly when we build the program. Okay, this is what we use to get the money to move around on the blocks, okay? Okay, as we did last week, we start off with the um, set X2 and the set Y2. Okay, now we've done them as two separate things instead of using the set X and set Y because we want to be able to change them independently. Okay, and then we've got a green block in here. Okay, and the green block is where we actually do the calculation where to get the money to appear. All right, now if you look at the stage, I put on our axes, these horizontal and vertical lines, and zero, zero is in the middle there. And then you see we've got these other numbers at the bottom and on the left and the right. Okay, those numbers show you the center of the square. Each square is 60 by 60 steps, so the middle of the square would be where? Anyone? No. If you've got a block 60 by 60, how would you get to the middle of that block? 30 and 30. All right, halfway. Okay, so you can see we've got plus 30, plus 60, plus 90. Those are all in the middle of the square if you go up. And here we've got minus 30. There should be a minus 60, minus 90, minus 150. And these are also in the middle of the squares. All right, so... What you need to remember here is that our steps, okay, are going to be 60 because the blocks are 60 and we have an offset, okay, of 30. All right, that gets us into the middle of the block. So if you have a look here, we have a starting point for x minus 210 over there and for y minus 150 over there. Then we pick a random number. Do you guys remember what the random number thing does? Okay, what does it do? If it's any number between those two, it's six numbers. Right, so this one over here will pick anything between 0 and 7, and this one will pick anything between 0 and 5. All right, and then we multiply it by 60. So here you can see 0 times 60 is 0, 1 times 60 is 60, 7 times 60 is 420. Now, why are these numbers important? Okay, if we have a look at our calculations down at the bottom here, and on the side, you'll see minus 210, which is over here, plus 0 gives us minus 210. So if we choose 0, the x isn't going to move from minus 210. If we choose 420, okay, which is 7 times 60, minus 210 plus 420 gives you plus 210. Plus 210 is going to jump you all the way over there. 
Okay, do you guys, uh, is, am I making sense? Okay. Then same for the y-axis over here. Okay, if we start at minus 150 and we add 0, we're not going anywhere. If we start at minus 150 and we add 300, come in. Then we jump up to the top here at plus 150. Now you must remember the numbers that we get out of this green bit here can be anything in this range here. Okay, for the x-axis it can be anything from 0 to 7. For the y-axis it can be anything from 0 to 5, which is 0 to 240 once we multiply it out. Okay, this is pretty basic way of moving things around on a screen. If you guys have ever played computer games and you have a guy chasing you or you are chasing someone else, this is the kind of stuff that gets done to move the little characters around on the screen. Okay, so let's get some coding done. All right, let's start off by moving the cat. All right, for those of you who have got the flash drive and your computer's got the all clear, please plug it in and load up the, the um, I think I put the name here, you can't really see it at the bottom, money underscore no code. Okay, money under no, underscore no code. That'll have your sprites on, it'll also have your scoring, and it'll have your background. So you don't need to waste time going to look for those. Okay. Is everyone with me? Okay, let's go back. Let's start moving our cat around. Okay, so copy the code that's on the board there. We first start off with the green flag. When clicked, we go to X minus 30 and Y minus 30. And we point in a particular direction. Okay, so which one's the cat and which one's the money? This is the cat. Move the cat. All right, so you do this on the cat sprite. Okay, make sure that you've got the blue block around it. Or it appears in the top right-hand corner of your scripts area. Okay. All right, then once you've done this one on the left, go do the one on the right, the when left arrow key pressed. Okay, and I'm making you guys work a bit tonight because I'm not showing you how to do the right arrow, the up arrow, and the down arrow because you've done it before and you should be able to figure it out from the code that is shown on the board here, the when left arrow. Okay. <coughs> Yes. Hmm? Okay. Um, let's just stop your script and let's go to looks or draw. Sorry, there should be a clear here. There you go. All right. And you still need a thumb drive, eh? Okay. Check something here first. Okay, we should be fine. Okay, there you go. All right. Has anyone managed to do all four of the buttons? Okay, remember the one I'm showing here is only for the left arrow. You need to do for right, top, and or up and down. Okay, the only difference is you can copy this, you clone it or duplicate it. And then you change which key you're looking for in the top, and you change the direction you're looking for in the second block. Okay, fantastic. Okay, and once you've done that, you should be able to run the program and move your cat. Very nice, very nice. Yes. Okay. Left T minus 90. Okay, that's your right arrow. So we're going to change that back to 
left arrow and then you're going to duplicate it and now if you go right arrow you want to make sure that you are going right and then you do the same for up and down Off. Um, your sound needs to be on I'm just going to check are you doing it on the right one? Oh, you, you're doing it across. This shouldn't be on here. This should be on your cat. Okay, so I've copied it here. And now we just delete this one. And you carry on with your cat. Because you'll see your pop is here on your cat. And there's no pop on the money. All right, guys. This is what you should have if you've managed to do all, all of them. Up, down, left, right. Come in. Okay, moving on, guys. Okay, now we need to move the gold. Okay, so you just need to copy that down and then we're good to go. Why not? Oh, is it all swirled? Okay. So we're going to switch things up a bit today. And I'm actually going to do stuff on the screen for you guys to follow. So you need to pay some attention. Okay, guys, we're getting started. Okay, make sure you have selected your money, your gold. Okay, and you follow me. Because if you don't follow me, your game's not going to work. So first of all, we start off with a... When green flag clicked, then we're going to... A new area called data okay and in this data area you should already have a variable called score and we're going to drag the set score block and put it underneath the green flag and we are setting the score to zero so when your game starts you start off at zero okay we're going to come back to how variables work in a future lesson so don't worry too much about that for the moment okay then we're gonna drag a repeat block Okay, onto the script area, and we're going to change the repeat from the default 10, and we're going to make it 20. All right, if you want the game to run longer when you're doing it at home, then you can change the value from 20 to a bigger number to see if you can get a bigger score. Okay, now we're going to do the two blocks that move the gold around on the screen. So we're going to need the set X and the set Y. <coughs> blocks let's drag them onto the screen set x and set y okay and now we're going to go to our operators area and we're going to drag out the plus so there's one plus for the one blue block and the other plus for the other blue block okay in the x one we're going to make the value here minus 210 Okay, and for the Y1, we're going to make the value minus 150. Yes, minus 210 for the X, minus 150 for the Y. Okay, now we're going to look for the pick a random number block. And we're going to drag that into the little circle to the right of the plus. Can you see how it's lighting up there? So I drag it in and I drop it. And I do the same thing for, for the Y over there. Okay, and we need to change the default values. It's not from 1 to 10. For the X, it's from 0 to 7. And for the Y, it's from 0 to 5. All right. Now we need to drag a multiply block out. For both the X and the Y. That's in the green operators. It's the, the one with the little star in between. All right. Okay, now we're going to put the big blocks that we already have inside the multiply one. Okay. Inside the multiply one. And then we are going to put in what number on the right how big did I say our squares were 60 by 60 so we're going to put 60 in for the X 60 in for the Y okay and now we've got our maths done 
and we need to put them into the set X2 and set Y2 blue blocks. Whoops. Okay. There we go. Is it supposed to have like 10 times 60 like that? If you look at the screen, you should see what it should be. All right. Okay. And now we move our blue blocks into the repeat block. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. Is that better? Can you? S hmm? Is that better? Okay. <laughs> so everyone got to this point, guys? All right. So the next step is quiet, please. Quiet. Okay, Ms. LaRue will come help you in a minute. Great. Okay. Guys. All right. So how are we going to know if three seconds have gone by? Okay, because we only want the gold to stay in the block for three seconds. We need some kind of watch or clock. Okay, we go to sensing and we use the timer block. Okay, and we want to reset the timer block. Okay, after we've moved so that it's back to zero. Okay, and then we're going to check when it counts up to three and then we're going to move again. All right. Now there is a built-in timer in Scratch. It runs from when you open up your project and it counts up in 0.1 seconds, okay? And it even runs when your program's not working. If you want to reset it at any time, you just use this reset timer block that I've put on the screen now. Okay, now we need to do a check to see if you've managed to catch the gold or if the time has gone by. So we are going to go to control and we are going to bring out the wait until block. And we're going to put it under the reset timer. And then we're going to do two checks. What are the two checks we're going to do? The weight is under the control area. Yes. Okay, Mr. LaRue will come help you in a minute. Okay. Okay. Guys, quiet please. Quiet. Okay, we're going to do sensing. And we are going to see if player, which is our cat, is touching the gold. So, we're going to drag the first block under the sensing group. And we're going to put it in there. Okay, well we can't actually put it in there because we need to check two things. So first we're going to get an operator from the green. And we're going to get the OR operator. And we're going to put it on the stage, on the script area. And then we're going to put the touching in the first block. And we're going to set it to player. All right. And then we're going to check our timer. All right. Is everyone with me? Okay. Wait. Okay, so next we're going to check the timer. So we're going to go back to our sensing collection. And, sorry, we're actually going to go to the operators first. And we're going to get a greater than operator. Okay, put it on our stage. And then we're going to go to sensing. It's the one with the little arrow that points to the right. It's in the green blocks. Uh, in this case, it's greater than, 
because we're going to put our we're going to put our timer on the left. So we're going to put our timer on the left, and we're going to say the timer must be greater than three seconds. All right. Now we're going to take our timer, then greater than three, and we're going to pop it into there. All right. Okay. Now we get. Yes. Three. All right. So now we're going to take our block that we built together, which says touching player or timer greater than three, and we're going to put it in our wait until block. Okay. All right. So your code should look like this now, guys. Okay, so your scratch program is going to stop here and wait until either you are touching the gold or the timer is greater than three. Okay, now what do we need to do? What happens if you touch the gold? Okay, you want your score to do what? You want your score to go up. So we need to do a check, we need to check, are you touching the gold? So we're going to use the if then control block, okay, and we are going to go and find our touching player block again, which is under sensing, so go to sensing, first block at the top, your light blue, and you put it into your if then, and then you click on the little down arrow, and you choose your player sprite. Okay, now it's not going to be any fun if we don't make some noise, so we are going to go to sound, and we are going to choose play sound, and we're going to drop it in. All right, but we haven't increased our score yet, so we need to go to data, and we need to go and say change score by one. Okay. So everyone managed to get that. Okay. And if we play our game now. Yeah. Has the gold disappeared? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. Three points. Okay, I'll come check in a minute. Okay, so you guys should have this on your screen. Okay, seems like we have a problem that our gold is missing. Okay, okay. all right. It works perfectly, it just doesn't go into the actual block. Uh, it's most probably offset a bit. Okay. Guys, I'm sorry that you are having some trouble. The full game is on your flash drives. Okay. 
So we can load that up quickly if you want to check it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see your gold has also disappeared. So my gold is only if you marry me by 20 points. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to move on. The full game is on your flash drive. All right, so you can check that out at home. Okay, let's move on. You don't need to save because the completed game is on your flash drive. Okay, next one. Okay, we're going to do another game. All right, this one is called Catching Apples. Guys, please stop with the sounds. And the phones. And the phones. Okay. Guys, we're going to do another game quickly. Hopefully we can get it done if the, before the power disappears. Sounds, please. Stop. Guys, stop with the sounds. All right. This game is going to basically show you how to work with cloning, all right? Because we've got a little apple cart that you're going to move left and right at the bottom here. Very much like we did with our Pong game in Lesson 1. And then we're going to have apples falling from the top. And we need to try and catch the apples, okay, in the cart. How many apples do you see here? Four. How many sprites do you think we're going to use to put those four apples up there? One. Okay, we're going to use one because we're going to clone that one apple. All right. Okay. So let's get started. Okay, you can load up the, um, I think it's Apple Catch. Or, here we go. Catch apples, no code from your flash drives. Okay, so don't save whatever you've done before. Load up the no code. Catch apples, no code. All right, everyone got it loaded. Okay, we're first going to do the moving of the cart. Okay, we're going to do... Who's playing with the sounds? Okay. You guys need to copy this code, okay, which is going to get you moving your apple cart, okay? Again, I haven't done the bottom part here. You guys need to figure out what to do there, okay? We're going to start off with when green flag clicked and then go to X0, Y minus 180. And then there's a forever loop. And inside the forever loop, we have an if then block. And we're going to use from the sensing palette, the blue palette, we're going to use the key pressed event, all right, to figure out which key is pressed. And if it is the right arrow, then we're going to change X by 30. Okay, underneath that, you will do a copy of this to figure out the left arrow. Okay? Remember, you can duplicate your code so you don't have to drag it down from scratch. Okay? You can just duplicate this if and put it underneath. And then you're going to change your right arrow to a left arrow and change your X by how much? No. You're minus 30 because you want to go in the other direction. Okay? If you made it 30, it would be the same direction. No, no. This is what you need to do. Okay, guys, this is what you should have. Okay, now we're going to move on. Wait, is that what we should have now? Yep. Now pick the apple sprite. Guys. Okay, now there's two blocks that we're going to do next on the apple sprite. Okay, the first one is where we are going to clone our apples. All right, so we're going to start with our event, our green flag clicked. We're going to start with that. Okay, we also have our score variable that we're going to use in this game to keep our score. So once again, we're going to set the score to zero. Okay, and then we're going to use the show block from your looks collection, put it under our zero score, and then we're going to go to the control collection, and we're going to look for our repeat block that we covered last week, and we've used today already. Okay, the default value is 10, we are going to make it 30. 
Okay, so we're going to make 30 clones. All right, then we're going to our motion collection. And we're going to go for the go to X and Y block, the blue one. And drag it in. Okay, now we're going to set the, leave the Y at, my, at 180. But we're going to go and look for our random block again in the operators, the green collection. We're going to pick random. And we are going to drag it and put it in the X area. And instead of going from 1 to 10, we are going to go from minus 210 to plus 210. Okay, next step, okay? Quieten down, please. Okay, we are going to go and create our clone now. So in your control blocks, go all the way to the bottom. Look for create, con create clone and drag that into your repeat loop. Okay. And, and then also in the control block, we are going to... Uh, sorry, in the events... No. Control block. We are going to get our weights block and we are going to... Drag that under our create clone. Okay, and again we are going to wait a random period. Okay, a random number of seconds. So pick random and drop that where the one is on your wait. And we're going to wait not one to ten because that would take too long. We're going to wait between 0 0.1 and 1.5. So we're going to wait anywhere between one tenth of a second and 1.5 seconds. Okay. And then we are going to go back to our looks collection and we're going to find our hide block and we're going to put that underneath our repeat. All right. Can anyone think why we are going to wait? Yes. If we don't wait, then all the apples are going to fall down at the same time. Okay? Are you, are you going to be able to catch all of them if they all come down at the same time? Okay, don't run it yet. There is a second block. You're only halfway. Okay, next block, okay? So we have created our clones. Now we need to use them. Okay, so go to your control collection and drag the when I start as a clone block onto your stay, onto your script area. Okay, then go and get your forever loop in the same control collection and put it underneath. Okay, now we're going to go to our motion collection and we are going to go look for a set Y or change Y block. Okay, and we're not going to leave it at 10 because 10 will make us go up. We're going to change it to minus 10, which will make it go down because we want our apples to fall down. Okay, then we're going to go back to our control area and we are going to go look for a if block. Okay, if then block. And we're going to drag that under our change. Okay, and now we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out if our apple is in our cart, and we need to figure out if our apple has fallen onto the ground. Yes, so we're going to go to the sensing, and we're going to look for the touching block at the top. And we're going to drag that one day into there. And we're going to click on the little down arrow and we're going to choose cart. All right. So what happens if we touch the cart? Okay. We've obviously scored a point. So we go to our data and we go change score by one. Well done. Okay, and then to make it interesting, we're also going to play a sound. All right, so we're going to say play sound, drag that block in, 
and we're going to choose the fairy dust noise, okay? Not the standard alien one. Okay, and then what do we need to do once it's in the apple cart? Guys, please don't play with it yet. We're not done. Okay, Carolina. Okay, we are going to delete the clone, okay? Because we don't need it anymore. So that's if we win. At the bottom of the control collection, the last block is delete this clone. You drag it and put it under your place sound. So that's step one. Step two is if we hit the floor with our apple, then we have to do another check. So we drag another if then, put it under the first one. Okay. And then we're going to... Okay, go to your motion blocks. Go look for the Y position at the bottom. Okay, and we are going to drag it uh, into where. We need to find an operator first that we can do a comparison on. So go, go to your green operators, and we are going to look for the less than block. Uh, the green one with the arrow pointing to your left. And we're going to put the Y position in the left block. And the number we're going to put in is we're going to put in minus 100. Okay. And minus 100 on your stage happens to be below your apple cart. So if it's below the apple cart, then you're not going to be able to catch it. So that's going to be our check to see if you missed the apple. Then this check that we've just built, the Y position less than 100, we put into the if then block. All right. And now, okay, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, all right, now we're going to play a sound again, right, because if you, if you miss out, then you also get a sound, okay, so we're going to, drag the play sound there into your if then, Carolina, Okay, and then what do we do when we're done with our clones? Alien Creek. All right, and then we delete our clone. All right, and if you've done everything right, you should be able to play your game now. Okay, this is what your code should look like, guys. Okay, guys. All right, we're carrying on. There's a few things you need to know about your clones. Please look at the screen. We're going to have to go over a few things about your clones. All right, Carolina. Okay, first of all, okay, your clones are a snapshot of the original sprite that you're cloning, okay? So if you start off, okay, with x equal to minus 100, y equal to 0, then you point in direction 90, and then you set the size to 60%, okay? That's not something we've done yet. Basically, it shrinks your clone. And then you make a clone, all right? And then you move it, and you change its position, and you set its size back to 100%. The clone doesn't change when the master changes, okay? The clone has all the properties of the master when it's made, all right? So if you change your master afterwards, your clone isn't going to change, all right? That's important point number one. Important point number two, clones are not stamps, okay? They're not a copy of your costume on your sprite. They are a copy of everything on your sprite, okay? So, do you guys want to try this one quickly? Okay. Don't worry about saving. This is on your flash drive, your game, so you can look at it at home. Just go File New, don't save. 
All right, and try and do this one quickly. Okay, guys, quieten down. I need to explain something here. All right, why do you think? Why do you think all the cats are turning? Okay, including the sprites. Yes, because the clones have a copy of this script. Okay, all right. So every one of the clones has this script where if you press the space key, they turn by 15 degrees. All right. Okay, we're moving on to the last exercise, which is a lot of fun. It's very simple. So keep quiet and listen, please. Okay, be careful how you create your clones. Okay, because you can land up with a zombie apocalypse if you're not careful. All right. You always need to create your clones on the click event. Okay, if you don't do that, things are going to get scary. So file new and try do this one for me. See a couple of you have got it running already. Can anyone tell me why it's doing what it's doing? Okay, why does this happen? Why does this happen? Anyone, yes. Yes, so clones are making clones of themselves, okay? Which is not really a good idea because you lose track of things. So always make your clones when you click the green arrow or green flag, sorry. Okay, don't worry about copying this down or saving it. It will be in the PDF that we're going to put on our lesson four page on our website. So you can download it at home. And if our video works out, you'll be able to watch this again on YouTube as well. Okay, so homework. Okay, I want you guys to try and do problems five and nine in your session three and four folder. The exercises.pdf file there. You open it up, go look for exercises five and nine. Okay, and see if you can do those at home. All right. Then also, please remember to go and look at our website. We put extra stuff up there. Hopefully, we'll also be putting a video up there of today's lesson as well, if you need to go over it at home again. Okay. Okay, what are we going to do next time? Has everyone got that copy down? Okay, we're going to play with changing costumes. We're going to deal with speaking and thinking. Okay, they're not going to speak through your speaker. They're just going to write words on the screen. We're going to play with image effects, which you've seen a bit already. Change size and visibility and play with layers.